Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. I am your host, Master Resilience Implementer, Inspirational Speaker, Performance Enhancement Expert, and Author, Sean Douglas. I want to welcome all of our listeners who are listening from wherever you are. This show is currently heard in 30-plus countries, such as U.S., Brazil, Canada, France, Australia, and New Zealand. So I want to thank you to those who are listening from around the world. Life Transformation Radio is all about our transformations. Here we tell the stories of why we are doing what we're doing. We highlight that transformational moment that changed our lives and how we are using these to help transform others and elevate lives around us. You can listen to us at our normal listening time every Wednesday and on the first and third Fridays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. But on certain days, we have amazing, impactful guests that have book launches, brand launches, business launches, or just promoting some sort of an amazing event that can change lives. And today, on the show, we have an amazing guest in Jeremy Slate. He's on the heels of a brand new launch that he's going to talk about, and kind of where his mind was when he created this, this new adventure. And my guest, I'm telling you, you're going to get pumped up and ready to take your dreams to a whole nother level. The guy is insane energy. The guy is genuine and authentic. So please help me welcome to the show, Jeremy Slate. What's up, buddy? Hey, Sean. Thank you so much for having me, man. I was I was kind of stressing that I was leaving you hanging. So thank you for your patience. <laughs> and I'm really uh, excited to hang out with your audience today, man. Dude, I am super pumped to have you, man. Super pumped. I met you at uh, at New Media Summit in San Diego, man. And you just Dude, you command the room, man, whenever you, wherever you go, man. Like, you're just doing incredible, incredible things, man. Oh, I appreciate that, man. I try to do it in the nicest way possible because, you know, we're, <laughs> we're all here just trying to make things work, man. I'm, I'm right. no better than anybody else, but I'm trying to add my value to the world. I love it, man. I love it. So, Live Transformation Radio listeners, this is a live show if you're catching us live. If you have any questions for Jeremy, you can call in at 657 657- 383-1109. Again, the number is 657-383-1109. If you're catching us on the replay on Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, or wherever you're listening from, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. So we are going to rock this thing, dude. Are you ready to go? Hey, man, let's make it happen. Let's do this. This episode is entitled Command Your Brand with Jeremy Slate. At 19, Jeremy tore three major ligaments in his knee and prepared himself for what was supposed to be a routine surgery. The surgery was not so easy and took a dark turn. After being out for about three days, he received last rites from a priest. This moment should have been a life-changing event for him, but it wasn't. Jeremy went on to receive his master's degree in ancient history from Seton Hall University, studied literature at Oxford University, and graduated into one of the worst job markets in history. His intention was to get his Ph.D. and teach college, but at the same time saw no path to becoming a professor. He ended up continuing as the weekend manager at the same gym that he worked worked at for eight years. Jeremy took on a job painting houses, which led to almost eight months of 16-hour days. 
but was then hired as a high school history teacher, which turned out to be exactly what he didn't want. Jeremy resigned from teaching to start a personal training company, an MLM business, and sell life insurance all at the same time, which marked the start of his entrepreneurial career. In late 2015, Jeremy Ryan Slate started the Create Your Own Life podcast. At first, he struggled as an entrepreneur, but due to hard work and determination, his life skyrocketed. In addition to interviewing many of the people he admires most, he is CEO of Command Your Brand and Slate Media Productions. Jeremy was a high school teacher and personal trainer, but finally found his place in marketing. He enjoys helping people reach the level that they believe they can because he believes in them. Through his podcast and his blog, Jeremy aims to help people build the business and the life of their dreams. Jeremy has interviewed over 250 entrepreneurs he greatly admires, including Grant Cardone, Tucker Max, and Robert Green. You can connect with Jeremy at commandyourbrand.media or www.jeremyryanslate.com and all of his social media platforms end with at Jeremy Ryan Slate. Definitely connect with him. So, dude, what stuck out to me, man, was like 250 entrepreneurs, like some big well, names, man. Well, at this man. point now, man, it's like uh, it's uh, we just released three, well, 341 tomorrow as we're doing this. So, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, we've been rocking and rolling, man. The bio. <laughs> Yeah, it's a long bio, right. man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I had to cut it down, chop some things, kind of move things around, you know. But, uh, but, dude, like, okay, so, so, I like, I know you, I follow you. Um, before I ask the first question, man, I got like, like Latin, bro. Like twelve like years, man. Ancient twelve history. years. Jeez, man, I have Latin tattooed on my arm. I have veneratio fidelitas, loyalty and honor. And, mm-hmm. and, and I chose Latin because I believe if you get to the core of things and the core of Italian, Spanish, and English language is Latin, um, th- that's like my brand, man. Like like loyalty and honor is my brand. I try to live that out every day. But bro, Latin is not an easy language. No, I it's well, I went to I went to Catholic school the whole way. So like um, mm. in like se- sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, they start you in Latin, and I was like, well. This is kind of easy because I've already been doing it. So you have to take a language in high school. I took Spanish, right. and I was kind of like, I don't want to have to do something new. So I just stuck with it, you know, all through there, through, <laughs> um, through, through high, through uh, college, and then grad school. They make you actually like take a test that you can like read something in one language and translate it totally to another. Like that's it. You just sit there with the the, the piece, and you just translate it totally in English. So that's kind of crazy. That's cool, man. So the first question I always ask on the show is why. Why do you do what you do? I feel like that's the first question that you always have to ask yourself every moment a decision comes up that's huge, life-altering, and every time you wake up in the morning and get ready for the day, it's like, what am I going to do today, but why? But why am I doing it? So tell us what your why is. Why do you do what you do? Well, it's funny, man, because that's, I, I think early on in my life that the problem was I don't know why. You know, like That was kind of the biggest problem, so I was like – you know, you mentioned all these different things I did. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I was living for other people. I wasn't living my own goals. I didn't know what those goals were. Then the goals turned to let's make some money, and money became a why, and that was a really bad why because it doesn't really help other people survive and survive well. So for me, my why was it, it kind of changed like really after my mom had mm-hmm. her stroke in 2013, and that was like wow. a really, really emotional thing. And, and why for me became – you know, why? Because you may only have one shot. And it kind of became that where I wanted to help other people to really kind of reach that place where this could be the only shot they ever have. So let's make it happen. So for me, it it started out with figuring out why I wanted to actually be and then helping other people to do that. And it it really, until it came down to that place where it was to a place of mortality, it it was tough, man. Before that point, I didn't really know. It was kind of like, well, this is the best option right now. Um, what do I want to do? I, I don't know. And it, it really wasn't something I had figured out until I was about 25. Wow. Man, that's – a lot of people that I've been interviewing lately is like 2013, 2013. I keep hearing it, 2013. My grandfather passed away in 2013, two weeks before my deployment. Your mom had a stroke in 2013. Like it seems like 2013 was like – let's take pivotal year, man. lives away. <laughs> right? I was like, holy – man, it's like the last couple of guests I've had, I'm like, wow, 2013. That's insane. So, uh, one of the one of the greatest things that I that I think happens is that transformational moment. 
right? It, it, and I loved where you were real. It was like it was supposed to be that life altering moment, you know, but it wasn't. And then, you know, so so you've had a couple. You've had a couple of transformational moments. Tell me who Jeremy was from nineteen out of it. Like who was he the past couple years and, and beyond that since nineteen? Who was Jeremy? Well, I, it, it's funny because, like I said before that point, I was somebody without any really direction. I was just living every, other people's dreams. Um, mm-hmm. You know, since that point, I've been somebody that really wants to help others, and it even shows by a lot of what I'm doing. You know, I'm helping promote people. I, you know, when I when I started my podcast, now it was okay. How can I help teach other people? And so for me, it's really coming from a place of value and helping others. But before that point, you know, I was I was always a pretty good athlete, but I wasn't the best. Um, I was always in pretty good shape, but I wasn't the best. So I was always like, I don't know, man, like how Grant Cardona always talks about it's horrible to be average. I was average, yep. man. I was super, super average. And I, I really didn't see doing anything different because I, I come from a small town. It was five eighths of a mile. Neither of my parents went to college. I have um, 60 first cousins and 100 and something second cousins. None of them went to college. <laughs> so. Nobody does anything, man. Like I came from a small town where just, you know, uh, one town over was where the coal mine was. So nothing really happens. Wow. So I didn't really see a reason to do better until I started, you know, like kind of urching out into this area where, where people were challenging me. So it wasn't until I had this, this area to be challenged that things looked any different. And I ever wanted to get out of that comfort zone of, you know, okay, well, network marketing, maybe not the best way to start out, but you know what? It's a step up from where I am. And that's how I yeah. always kind of looked at it. How I'm always trying to constantly better myself. And I've kind of realized when you can go from being totally self-determined to determined just for yourself and actually be able to spread that determination across the group and see how you can help others, that it really it changes the game, man. It really does. And I think right. that for me has been the biggest transformation is stop thinking about just myself. Yeah. You know, I, I'll make an observation about MLMs and, you know, they get all these bad names or whatever. But what I want to say – I started in a company called Monavi. It was acai berry juice or I don't know, whatever it was that we were selling. It eventually became um, energy drinks and everything else. I have some friends that were in Cutco. I got friends that, you know, like my sister's like super high up in the unique uh, makeup world. And it seems like a lot of entrepreneurs just they, they get a little taste kind of mm-hmm. in, the, in, the, in the MLM and the network marketing or whatever. And then after that, they just explode. It's a great you know, place the ones to start, that do though, very well. It's yeah. a great place to start. It's like a crash course in business. Like when you come from somebody that has a totally <laughs> academic background, yep. and it's like, all right, try and sell people something now. Like that's a great way to start yep. because you can't really screw up all that bad. Right, but everything's built for you too. They already got the website. They already got the promotional materials. You just have to go push the product. I mean, really, exactly. that's, that's what it is. You know, so, so you don't have a great to do way any to of the backing stuff. Yeah. Yep, Absolutely. So can you pick one of your transformational moments uh, that you had, right? Mm-hmm. And looking back, what was so significant about that transformational moment? When I think of those transformational moments, it's, it's I was one way and now I'm like the 180. Like this set my path, this set my life and cemented my future into what I'm doing now. So can you pick a, a transformational moment that happened that put your life out of the path that it's going now? Sure. Well, it's, it's interesting, too, because I, like, I don't think there's ever just one, right? Because it's like, right. you know, when I was 19, it should have been a transformation moment. Now it's just kind of something cool to talk about. Um, you know, when my, when my mom had her stroke, like that was kind of a transformational moment. But I think like the one that really got me to where I was, you know, where I am now is um, in 2015 was kind of like that big turning point year for me where a lot of stuff just kind of turned around. And in May of that year, um, I did a service trip where I went to Peru and you, I like, I've never seen poverty like that in my life. Like I've just, I've never experienced that before. Like, you know, I did say I come from a small town where not a lot of people get out, but it's kind of like, you know, we still live pretty good here in America. Like we've got it pretty darn good. Like our idea of what poor is, is nothing like what poor is in other countries. So, you know, to go to a place where a lot of times I didn't have internet connection. Um, you know, I didn't speak the language, like I wasn't great with Spanish, so I could understand it from all that Latin. Um, Mm -hmm. but it was interesting to just see poverty, like people living with tarps for their houses. Like as you, as you go into, um, the the base of the Andes and you see a lot of the people living there. And just for me, it was kind of like, people live like this. Like this is the way this is people, people have a hard time like this. So for me, it really put myself in perspective of, you know, like, wow, we really need to do something about this. And like, you know, this cushy life that I have that I'm always crying about and I'm always complaining about, like, 
it's not really that bad. You know what I mean? I've got it pretty darn easy. And I, mm-hmm. I think that was one thing for me that really put it in perspective and really kind of put me on the right direction of, okay, cool. Well, I've got it great. I've got a lot of, um, a lot of assets, a lot of abilities and a lot of, you know, one, you know, hand ups. I could have been born in another country and really take that opportunity and run with it. And I think it was that that was kind of the kick in the butt I needed to get me moving and kind of just be exposed to that. Because I don't think, you know, when you walk through certain areas and they say it's dangerous in the U.S., it's kind of like, okay, well, not, probably not that bad. But you walk through, <laughs> through, right. through areas that are dangerous in some foreign countries, and it's pretty crazy. Like, I literally, um, we were in this one city called uh, Arequipa, which is uh, towards the south. And um, there was actually a mining riot going on while we were there. Like they were ripping up the streets. There was tear gas bombs. There was all this stuff going on. Like I've never seen anything like that, you know, and I, I, I live a sheltered life. So it was a little bit different. Like I know you were in the service, so you've probably seen some mm-hmm. stuff, you know, it was a little bit different yeah. for what I've experienced. But for me, that put it in perspective of, wow, like it was to the point where the, the place we were staying in, they took us out and it, we were there for rotary. They took us out in the middle of the night. And took us to the next city we were going to go to, and we're deciding should we send these these kids home or should we keep them here, because it was that bad. So mm. I've like never experienced anything like that before. So it just put a lot in perspective for me of, you know, how people really need to to you know give back and how what some people actually have to work out of, which you know we complain about our lives here and they're not that hard. Yeah, I, no, absolutely, absolutely agree. So I have a couple two part questions that, that I love to get your perspective on. So so what do you think was the best part about the transformational moment? Hmm. Learning to get outside of myself. Like because I feel like that's Ooh. the thing I end up talking about the most right now. Because a lot yeah. of times we just look at our own situation and we're like, Oh my gosh, poor me, poor blah, blah, blah. but once you, you realize that not only do other people exist, but they have, you may have quite a bit more advantages over them. And once you start looking at things in that way, that's a, that's a big game changer. So for me, that was kind of, I think that's the first thing I would say I took away from that. Love it. So the opposite side of that would be what was the worst part about it? Um, actually physically being concerned for my safety. I've never been hit by tear gas before, but I was, and that was pretty crazy. <laughs> um, my, my Holy eyes crap. were watering, my face hurt. Like I yep. never really happened before. It's, um, like I said, man, Rope like I've up. never, yeah, I've never served in the military or anything like that before. So like, mm-hmm. you know, I've never quite seen a situation like that. So I'm like, um, so is this the end? Is this what it looks like? And it was, it was just really interesting because I've never experienced anything like that before. Yeah. In basic training, um, one of the things that they do just, just to get you accustomed to it is you walk into the gas chamber with your gas mask on and you, the, the instructor or you, depending on you know how mean they want to be, they pull your gas mask off or you pull it off, and then you have to recite you know like like a reporting statement or or they give you something to read, and then you just see the tears flowing and the snot coming out, and you just yeah, I mean it's it's not good, man. That's tough. well, more power That's to you, man. You guys are you guys are some 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 hard up work, hard working guys. So more power to you, and I appreciate your service. Well, that's, oh, thanks, man. I, I'll tell you that, like, security forces, which are, like, our, our police or, or like, OSI, uh, which is, you know, like, the military FBI, it's Office of Special Investigations, they actually go through taser training, and you have to tase each other, and then you have to pepper spray each other, and then you have to – it's brutal, man, but, but they have to do it so that if something happens to them, like, like they get tased or they get, uh, you know, pepper sprayed or, or something happens, they know how to combat those – um, those moments because they've had people take their pepper spray in, in a scuffle or, you know, whatever, or, or the, you know, somebody uses gas against them. That's just part of the training. So I know exactly what that feels like, man. That sucks going through yeah, all I wasn't the... prepared for that either. So it was just no, like crazy. It was like, oh my gosh, what's <laughs> happening? My throat is swelling up. Like it was nuts. Oh yeah, man. Ugh, terrible. So another two-parter I got for you, man. I love this question. Who has been your biggest influencer? Grant Cardone, without a doubt, um, just because Ew. he's the guy I have, I have followed him for years and it's just, I've always, I, I'm, I'm always a, a, somebody that doesn't want to mix messages. You know what I mean? Because I feel right. like if you take too much from this person, too much from that person, too much from this person, like you don't have really anything solid or cohesive to go with. So I've really mm-hmm. just kind of just taken one message and taken Grant's message. And for me, um, that's why I've always taken a high level of action to everything I've done because you know, it started with that 10X rule, man. It got me moving. So he's been the oh, biggest yeah. influencer in my life. 
And it was the coolest thing ever and kind of a little bit of a fanboy moment when I first got to meet Grant. Um, I was working a charity event in New York City and uh, my, my, my wife was working the check-in at the event. She's like, oh, you're never going to believe who I saw. It was Grant Cardone. So she's like, you got to get over here. And I was like, so I ran over there to, to meet Grant and, and he just, he is the nicest person when you meet him in person he's like hey man how's it going what do you do and i was like me you want to talk about That's me awesome. so, so i told him about my podcast and everything else and he's like oh let's do an episode that'd be great and i was just like me so it was just really cool because like for somebody like i had taken so much motivation and so much out of what he did put it in action it had changed my life and then to be able to like talk to him about that nothing like it man wow yeah my guy so you know i, I gotta say though i love reading the hate comments like, like if, if Grant Cardone's live or something, you know, I love reading the hate comments because like, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're this, you're this. And there's like one that's like inserted like, oh, whatever, you're a liar. And then it's like all the way down. There'll be like another one. Like some of the stuff, like people hate Grant Cardone. And people love him. There's no like medium. There's no warm or cold. Like it's just like you either love the guy or hate the guy. But the one thing that he always says that rouse people up is that he has F you money. He's like, oh, I got F you money. Like <laughs> <laughs> I laugh. I think it's funny. Like you know, but like, here's the here's the thing about that though, man. Like like you mentioned, the, the funny thing about what you're saying is, but I see hate comments. Well, they're still watching him. You know what I mean? Like no matter what, they're still watching <laughs> yeah. him. You know what I mean? Right. He wins. Yeah, definitely. Uh, my two guys that I follow religiously, man, Gary Vaynerchuk and Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas, man, like I, oh my gosh, I can't even speak enough about Eric Thomas. Great motivational speaker. He's from Detroit, like me. Uh, th- yeah, those are my two dudes, man. Uh, so, so on the flip side of that, who's been your biggest supporters? Biggest supporters? Um, oh gosh. Well, my wife has been huge just because um, oh, yeah. she was the one that really helped me get go from being a high school teacher to being an entrepreneur because she had already, you know, come from a family that ran its own business for years. So like that was just kind of the norm for her. So that was yeah. kind of supporter number one. Um, also, um, I worked at a marketing company for a number of years, um, you know, when I was kind of like figuring things out there, writing, building websites, writing copy, all this different stuff. And my boss there, Karen, was somebody that like whenever I needed business help and to this day when I still need business advice, I can always go back to her. And she's been super, super helpful for me through a lot of I've been through. Um, but if I had to look at one person that was kind of a turning point for me, um, let's go back to 2013 because apparently that's the year. Um, I was <laughs> chatting with, I was chatting with a guy named uh, Patrick Valton, who is a uh, really high level business consultant, works at a lot of really large companies and I think over a hundred countries at this point. And um, he, he asked me why I was doing what I was doing. He goes, you know, what's your goal, man? Like, like, and when I, he, he, he said, I really, really want you to take a look at what you're doing and see if it's actually in alignment with where you want to be. And when I looked at it, I didn't know. I figured I, the funny thing I figured out, and you're gonna laugh, is I didn't know where I wanted to be. And, and once I kind of figured that out, I figured what I was doing now was never gonna take me to where I actually wanted to go. So, oh yeah, it, yeah. it's what brought me out of a lot of those different things I was working on. But it, it took you know a little bit of time for that to actually sink in. But I, I do I appreciate that from Patrick all the time, and it's actually um, I'm somebody I get to talk to quite frequently now as well. So it was a really cool experience, and he's been very supportive. Perfect, man. I love it. So what do you enjoy most about what you do, man? Talk about, you know, Slate Media Productions and Command Your Brand. You know, what, what's the most enjoyable thing that you do? I like helping people tell their story. And that's because it's funny because a lot of the podcasts I listen to aren't really business podcasts. I listen to shows that are storytelling, that are, you know, mm. about, fa- about uh, you know, famous people in history, things like that. So I like telling people's story and helping them put together the emotional element of you know, helping them connect with people and, yeah. and really helping them. And because of that, it helps them build their business. And that's the biggest thing I find when I tell people like when they're, when they're going to be on a podcast or media or whatever is be the most valuable person out there. And if you do a good enough job in that and tell people where to go in the end, they'll want to work with you. It's not because you get on there and you're, you're Billy Mays and take a look at my sham. Wow. And all this stuff, you, you know what I mean? It's, it's, you need to be so yep. darn valuable that people, people, hear you and they're like wow that is like something i can actually apply in my life and do okay i need to work with this person so for me it's really helping people put that perspective on it tell a story and it's funny too because i feel like though i got out of teaching i'm still teaching right i'm still teaching people by learning from these great people and that's why when i started my podcast i put together a list of the top 100 people that i most admired and want to learn from um we're still working on dave grohl haven't got there yet but uh 
I'm, I'm a huge Foo Fighters fan. But um, yeah. I, and once I turned that around and started really like deconstructing what these people did to teach other people, it was pretty incredible. So I think for me, it's teaching in a different way now. And I, I love what I do every day because I get to help people tell a story and, and teach others. You know, my, my mentor told me to do the same thing. He's like, before you even do the show, you need to write down about 50 to 100 people. Like, who do you want on the show? Like, who are people that you know? Maybe not personally, but, but you know of them. You know, is it the Gary V's? Is it, you know, E.T. and all these other guys? It's like, huh. So I did that. And, you know, so I started writing down like guys like, like Bruce Buffer. You know, like, I watch UFC all the time. Like, that'd be awesome to get some UFC fighters on, you know? Um, you know, I've had Tom Ziggler on the show, you know, cause I'm a speaker and, and I love Zig Ziggler quotes and all that stuff. And it's powerful, man. When you, when you can write down, like when you, when you put pen to paper and then speak it out, like I'm going to make this happen and I'm going to do this. You've had some amazing people on your podcast. I'm scrolling through, listening to episodes. I'm like, no way. Like this dude, <laughs> like, holy crap is awesome. You know, like, like in the past month. You've had, like, amazing, like, back to back to back. Like, you've knocked it out of the park as some of those guests, and I applaud you for that. Uh, I'm still working on Brendan Burchard. He's told me no, like, four times. I'm not giving up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make him mad. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to make him mad, right, to the point where he's like, fine. Just Let's just do it. Oh, you know, like, just get him irritated enough. Maybe he'll say yes. But I'm looking at that list constantly, you know, and, and I – begin to get into the space of podcasting and guys like Steve Ulsher and, and the guys that we met at New Media Summit. I'm like, oh, i got to add those to the list now. <laughs> like, I added you to the list. I'm like, yeah, let's do this. And, you know, I was like, man, the list is ever growing. And, and the, it seems like the more I get deep inside of the personal and professional development, the more amazing people I meet. You, you feel the same way? Absolutely. Can I, can I ask you too, just like, did you get to talk to Bruce Buffer? Oh, he's he's on my show, yeah. You got to get him to do an intro. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> life transformational radio. That would be like that would so be awesome. epic. That would be so <laughs> epic. That would be cool. in this corner. <laughs> <laughs> right, just, just introduce it. You know, we talked about that. I asked him one of the questions. I asked him. I said, uh, I said, I'm going to ask you about weddings and about parties. He's like, Oh God. I'm like, so, so how does it feel when people ask you, like, hey, can you introduce us, like, for a wedding? And, like, can you introduce my family or whatever? He's like, you know, it's probably one of the most enjoyable things that I do. And I try to have as much fun with it as I can. But with a voice and a brand that I've built, like, why not? Like, why not, you know, at the lowest possible level, just make someone happy on their wedding day? He's like, why not? I'm like, that's cool, man. Like when I'm like at the top or I'm big, or whatever, like I want to be able to do that. Just reach back out and be like, come on, like come with me. You know what I mean? Like, oh man, it's super oh awesome. God. Ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the Motor City, Sean <laughs> Douglas. Anyway. Right. So super anyway, awesome. I took you on a total sidetrack, man. So what, what, what was your question again? <laughs> that was great. That was great. Um, yeah, so so I was talking about how, you know, the deeper into professional development and personal development that we get, it's like mm -hmm. the more amazing people we find. We're like, oh, we got to add those to the list. Got to be on my show. Got to add those to the list. Like, it's like the, the network just keeps growing. Mm. Well, you know what's funny for me is I, I kind of – I don't know if this is what you found, the more interviews you've done, because I know you've, you've done quite a few at this point, is it's like I feel like we start to get past those, like, surface-level people that everybody knows – and we kind of find like mm. the mini superstars in a lot of different places. Like, like, dude, yes. I have just like, I keep digging into yes. like, like vector marketing, like again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And I just find like guy crushing it after guy crushing it after guy crushing it that like have amazing yep. stories and loyal followings and huge networks, but they're not like known out there. So for me, it's really cool to share those stories. But then also there's a flip side of that where you also get to interview some people that are, you know, almost like celebrities too. I just, yeah. um, for me, it was kind of a big deal that I just got to interview uh, Sean Merriman that went to, yep. you know, the all, all pro with the Chargers and all that stuff. So it's kind of cool to dig apart some of these guys and just, you know, find out what they're really, you know, they really look at. And it was kind of interesting with Sean is he's like, it's mindset, man. That's the entire thing. That's why I'm as mm -hmm. good as I am. That's why I could go around the edge like I could. That's why I could outwork any guy. So it's it's just really interesting that you can you know, as you get past the surface level people that everybody know, you start to get some of these like individual superstars in different industries 
And Mm -hmm. it's really kind of cool to realize, like, I'm sitting down with a person that's done, you know, something in, in, I I sat down with a guy recently that isn't super well known outside of his industry, but is a superstar in his industry, um, which is deconstructing the human genome. And they they built an entire product uh, that tells you your genome and like how you should eat and like how you should work out and all these different things. And I'm just like, I'm like, how incredible is that? But like That's he's awesome. not as well known outside of his space. So it's for me when you once when you get into that area of where like those opinion leaders are and you get to like really dig into that, I feel like I'm really like not just learning something, but teaching something like amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, dude, absolutely. I just I connected with uh uh with a fifteen year old um young man who's blind and autistic and has his own podcast. I'm like, wow. hey, wait, you're That's what? Awesome. He's like blind, autistic. And he has his own podcast called Mission Possible. And he's a Christian speaker and singer. I'm like, what? Wow. And he was just, just featured on ABC's Young and Gifted. I'm like, bro, you're 15. He's like, yeah. yeah seriously. <laughs> like, what was I doing at 15? I was, I was a travel like hockey player. I was on the travel team, league. Man. And I was, yeah, dude, I, was, I was like a, I don't know, like I was a loser at 15. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I was playing. I agree with sport. you, man. I was the same way. You know, I mean, I played hockey in the winter. I played, you know, I played football for, for high school, you know, all four years. Played hockey since I was six. I mean, I, my life was sports. You know, I was an all-star in sports. But and when I went home, dude, my room was a mess. And my mom was all mad at all the time. And I was like, <laughs> pissed off my family all the time. Like, I was, you know, and this kid's out, like, changing the world. <laughs> you know, he's 15. It's, I'm like, dude, give yourself 10 more years, dude. You're going to be, like, the new Gary V and Grant Cardone. And, like, people are going to know who you are. Isn't that the craziest thing, though, I think about, like, social media and everything now is, like, there's so many, like, 15, 16, 17-year-old kids that are, like, crushing it. I'm like, I'm like, I yeah. didn't even know, like, anything more than what college I wanted to go to at 17. Like, like it's right. kind of amazing, like, what the internet has allowed people to do now. Like, there's kids that are crushing it, and they're, like, not even 25 yet. Like, that's amazing. Yep. Yeah, man. The, 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 the way that the doors have been blasted open, where you can pretty much do anything, you know what I mean? Amazing. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the resources. What are some of the resources that you've used so far in your journey? Gosh, well, there, there's, it depends on what you're looking for, man. Cause like i I'm always for, first and foremost going to think that our fitness is really, really important mm-hmm. to, to how we perform and how we do. So for me, um, I, I, it's changed over the years, but the big resource I used there was um, a website, ast-ss.com. I used a workout called the Max OT. And um, in 25 minutes, you do uh, four to six uh, reps of eight to 12 sets of 80% of your max. So it ends up being a pretty hardcore workout, um, but you're wow. able to, in 35 minutes, really do a lot with it. So that was kind of like part one. And then part two was I kind of changed my whole diet strategy once I read The 4-Hour Body. And I've been doing uh, Tim Ferriss's slow carb diet for about three years now. So with the combination Perfect. of those two things, I kind of have everything in place on the fitness side because since I was 14, that's kind of been the big part of what I've done. So first and foremost, having that handled is, you know, kind of been the first couple of resources I've had there. Then it's kind of looking at, um, you know, different things I can like outsource and make easier in my life. So um, I use for, for our business, we use Google drive for everything, like literally Love everything it. because you can keep everybody in the same place. And I think uh, about a month ago, Google went out for a few hours and it was kind of like, Oh gosh. And the whole internet was freaking <laughs> oh, out no. when Google drive went down. But you know, there's that, there's, there's so many different things. Like I feel like I'm even just able to, you know, send money easier with like PayPal and things like that. Oh so God, yeah. basic and resources Stripe now, like Stripe has yeah, no fees. Like, like, like it's pretty, Crazy. pretty incredible. Like how, like how, like guys like you and me can own an entire business online where we don't have to have an office. So I think that, yeah, you know, it's really interesting too. And it's also like where we seek advice from as well. Like I talked about, yes. you know, getting a lot of information from Grant Cardone. I've always looked for experts that know what I want to know and tried to learn from them in that way. And, you know, the easy way is book an interview with them um, because then you can, get, can, can learn for free. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really interesting to, to look at it that way as, looking at resources rather than kind of like making everything really hard on yourself. It doesn't have to be right. Right. Yep. Tony Robbins says, you know, a lot of people have, uh, have failed at business because you don't have enough money or you can't find capital or, you know, you don't have a mentor or whatever. He's like, those are, those are all resources. Like, like that's not your problem. Your problem isn't the lack of resources. It's the lack of resourcefulness. That exactly. You, you know, 
I mean, there's so like I just got turned on to Mailer Light. Forever I was on Mailchimp, and I was like, screw this, man, I'm going to Mailer Light. You know, so Mailer Light is exactly what that is. Aweber, Mail, uh, Mailchimp, it's all the same stuff. You know, you build pages and you know emails lists, and you know you do the whole thing. It, there's just a little bit more to it. You know, there's Canva. I use Canva for graphics and stuff. You know, I mean, there's a ton of stuff out there that that if you use the resources correctly, will elevate you to a whole nother level. And, and well, absolutely, fitness, like, I even, guarantee you, fitness number one. Well, because if you're not in the right physical shape, you know, like it's kind of like good luck doing everything else you're doing. Like you talk about tools too. Like um, even for email opt-ins, we started using um, – we've used Sumo forever, but I started using their welcome mats, and I didn't have a great opt-in percentage mm-hmm. for it. It was only like one and three-quarters percent. Um, so I changed to right. uh, the welcome mat, and it went up to like eight and a half percent. So it's like even wow. like things like that making a vast change as well. Right. No, absolutely, absolutely. So if you had to go back – I love the answer to this question. If you had to go back right, and, and, and do things differently or change things, or maybe you wouldn't change anything, what would be the first thing that you would do if you had to start all over again if you lost it all? Wow. Um, I, first of all, I don't know what I would change. Like, I don't think I would change anything because all those experiences made me who I am today. Mm-hmm. Um, but really – I would figure out first of all, like what I wanted, you know, what was my purpose? Because I think a lot of times we were kind of like drifting around with a lot of that. And then once you kind of have that in place, it's kind of like, okay, great purpose. Step one. Good. Okay. Now how do I make money off that purpose? Good. Step two. Okay. Who am I going to help? Step three. So it's kind of like figuring out what I want to do and putting a plan in place instead of just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. So that would really be the first thing I would do is, is really doing that because at 19, I didn't know, man. And it's, it's very different right. than it is now. So for me, that would be finding out, you know, that and also who's already been there. Like for me, I've had a huge resource and a guy named David Breyer, who's one of the top branding experts in the entire world. And he has really cut the learning curve for me in a lot of different ways, because anytime I need help, I can ask him. And that's been a really big deal for me. So really it's figuring out your purpose figuring out where you want to go, how you're going to do it. And also find the experts that have been there, man. Like there's people that have yeah, done man. it. You don't have to keep banging your head into a wall. Yep. The, the number one thing that everybody who's successful says, like find a mentor, like find a yeah. mentor. My mentor took it above and beyond. He says, if you're going to find a mentor, find someone that is doing what you want to do at the level that you want to operate at, at the money that you want to earn. So if that means you need mm-hmm. to fork over like 10 grand to, gar- to Grant Cardone, then do it because you're only going to earn as much as that coach is earning. Because if that coach is earning $10 million, then he'd be earning $10 million. But if he's only earning a million dollars, then that's – I mean you're only going to earn what he's going to earn. You exactly. Know? So if you want to earn whatever 10, 20, 100 million, whatever you want to do, you know what I mean, go, go find the coach. I mean even I, – I didn't even know this, but Tony Robbins has coaches that coach him. I was like, what? Like Tony Robbins is the man. And they're like, no, 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 he who, has Who are coaches. those guys? <laughs> I'm like, I want to know how much those guys cost. <laughs> like, Seriously. you know what I mean? Like holy crap. That's funny. So, so talk about uh, talk about your projects now, man. Talk about what is uh, Command Your Brand. I know it's brand new, man. Just launched it out. What is that? Yeah, so a- absolutely. So it, it's kind of it, it's funny. So I looked at like what I've done, right? And it's it's I've managed to create celebrity in the podcasting space by a lot of different things I've done because it's an amazing space, right, man. Like there is just so many cool things going on here. So you know, let's 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 backtrack it even further. And one of the first things I realized um, when I was doing podcast interviews is there were good guests and there were bad guests. And there was like something that made all the good ones very similar. And the biggest thing, um, which I actually didn't get to do with you here because I was kind of like, oh my gosh, I can't find the link. I'm Sean. I'm so sorry. Um, (laughs) The thing is I usually ask like, what's the biggest thing I can offer your community that's going to be most valuable today? And when you show up as a person of value, it changes the game. Because I've had other people come come on my show as guests and you know, I like to give him a great welcome, give a website for him in the beginning. And I had one guy one time and I said, what's the best website for you? He goes, uh, Google me. And I was just like, whoa, okay, <laughs> wow. Um, all right. Um, I, I didn't realize you were so important. I'm really sorry because here's the thing. Like, even when you Whoa. deal with people that are really important, but they're humble about it, it works yeah. very well and they can show up as a great guest because they show up to teach. So that's kind of like one thing I realized is when I looked at all these people that were guesting, there was a very similar like beingness to the ones that did very well. They showed up with value. They taught one thing and one thing only, and they didn't try to teach 10 because you know what? You're on a half an hour, an hour or whatever. People don't have the time span to think about that. And then they gave some sort of a, some sort of an opt-in or a, uh, or whatever that would then 
allow the people to then do what they did in that episode. For example, like if I talked about podcasts, I have a checklist that shows people how to get on podcasts. So it's actually going to help them get a win off of what you just taught them. So now once you have these three components together, you have somebody that's a pretty great guest that could tell their story through different angles because you probably hate it as much as I do. The guy that gets on and you feel like he's reading off a piece of paper and he's not talking to you. You know, you mm-hmm. can have the story down, but you need to be able to tell it through the lens that that audience needs to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's flexible. So that's a big part of like what we were doing with people and it was working out really great. So then we started, you know, working with different shows for, for bookings and that was great too, but we found out there was one thing missing and that was that a lot of people didn't know how to market that. So we added into that, helping people to put it on all their social media platforms, helping them to figure out how they can get it up in their blog and things like that. And here's the cool thing about that is when you give podcasters more traffic, I know it makes me happy. I'm sure it makes other podcasters happy. Oh yeah. It really starts to create a lot of value for everybody all around. And you know, there's, there's even um, a new program I'm working on with uh, Dave Lucas from Misfit Entrepreneur that has to do with some things we're going to be doing for podcasters in the future too, which, which I'll be talking about not too, too far out there. So there's, a lot of really cool things we're doing in the podcasting space. It's starting with guesting. It's going to move on to, you know, some other things we're helping with. So just, it's been really exciting over the, over the last year of all the cool stuff we've had going on. Dude, just in the past, like two months, man, I've, I've seen you just, you know, there, there's another episode and then another episode and like the, you know, the, the guests are, are high caliber people. And like, Hey man, got, got a crazy announcement, you know, got an awesome announcement. Oh, here's another announcement. I'm like, dude, like, <laughs> like you're crushing it. <laughs> like, well, that's also the PR well, like, I watched your too. video. Huh? That's also a little bit of the PR background too, because like there's a certain way yeah. you can position things that make them look really, really, really exciting. So, you know what I mean? Like promoting is so important. And I feel like, like as podcasters, a lot of times we're a little bit of artists, right? Like we want to do things in an artistic way. And what's the biggest thing is we're like, we feel bad about monetizing. We feel bad about all these other things, but promoting is your lifeblood. So if you do it tastefully and do it in a fun way, it makes things exciting and everybody can join into it. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, There's a couple, there's a couple groups. I'm sure you've seen it, you know, I was, tagging you in some groups like hey man i'm about to be on the show uh you know this is my guest this is you know and and that's the thing but but it's the way that you write it too you know it's the way that you know if you can hit on i i talk about the six basic human needs like all the time you know people need people need things you know to feel things to you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so if you can if you can hit on like certainty you know if you have a guest on the show, it's like, I guarantee this or oh, w- without a doubt, you know, with, in certainty you'll have, you know, whatever. Or like variety. People like a variety of things. That's why people – what do they call it? Uh, cost shopping or, um, you know, like I'm going to go to Walmart. I'll go to Target. I'll go here. I'll go here. I'll go here. And whatever the cheapest price is, that's what I'm – you know, cost comparison or whatever. You know, it's like a, I need a variety of – you know, different things. That's like if my mom tells me something like, hey, you need to do this. I'm like, eh, I think so. And like four other people tell me to do it. I'm like, okay, well, maybe I should do it. <laughs> you know? Let me so listen to four that. other people. You know, my wife gets mad at me too, man. My wife's like, I just literally told you that. And your best friend just told you that. And now you're listening to your best friend, really? Really? I'm like, well, it's a bro thing. You know, it's like, she's like, no, no, no. It needs to be like a spouse thing. You know? And so she gets mad at me. I'm like, it's, it's, my, it's my variety, honey. I have to have variety of people <laughs> telling me the same thing. And then significance, you know, people have to feel significant. You know, why, why do I have to listen to that show? Why do you, you know, three years ago, I had no idea. I mean, I knew what podcasts were, but I didn't mm-hmm. like listen to them. And it was why now, oh my gosh, like in, I don't even listen to the radio anymore. I put the Bluetooth on and I'm on a show right now. I'm listening to Grant, Car, uh, Grant, uh, or what's his name? Grant Baldwin speaker lab. That's what I'm doing. I'm listening to hit podcasts and then, you know, I listen to, to other ones, you know? But those are significant it's, because they've they've helped me. Mm-hmm. And then it, it's grow. pretty crazy too. Just like just as a side note, like how the podcast space has changed because I've been listening to shows since like '05, and it's just like crazy how that space has changed. So just just to add to that. Yeah. No, 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 absolutely. That's the contribution. That's the sixth one. Contribution. You know, when people feel like they're contributing. And and feel like they are a person of value. That's like the significance, you know. They have a better attitude about themselves. You know, the, the gratitude, the attitude of gratitude, you know, peaks up. You know, and there's all kinds of shows that are that are about that one thing, like your contribution and your significance and your, you know. And, and you're right, man. The space has changed a lot. You know, since you know three years ago when I started listening in 2014. I mean, even now I'm like, wow, look at this crazy show. I want to listen to this one. Look at this one. I want to listen to this one too. And 
And so I've got like all these lists of shows that I oh got to listen to. Well, the, the first show I started listening to um, just had its 10-year 10, 10 anniversary. It's uh, called the No Agenda Show, and they kind of like deconstruct the news and make fun of it a little bit. And it's, it's kind of like a, like a morning zoo type format. Like they have in the morning and like all these jingles and stuff. It's really, really funny. But it's just – it's kind of interesting too like how – like community builds around that, like, you know, community builds around yep. the show, like community builds around your show. And it really, it allows you to contribute in a very different way. And it's so cool. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. You know, I would tell you that, that for those that are listening and, and might think about doing a podcast, there's no absolute way that Jeremy and I would know each other without me having a show and going to new media summit. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was the catalyst. There's no absolute way that I would even remotely be a degree away from Bruce Buffer if he wasn't on the show and somebody didn't introduce us. You know, like there's, I mean, the doors fly open. It's like, hey, I have a podcast, I have this, I have this show, you know, and promoting, you know, I like to promote people's book launches and product launches and, and, and just promote them. I love that. And there's no way that I would meet any of the people that are, that are doing life full out without having the show. So if you're thinking about doing a podcast, I think Jeremy, you could agree, like just do it. Like this is Dude, now totally. the time to do it. Do you do podcast coaching or anything like that? Or? I, I, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well then these people should yeah. definitely hook up with you and get their message out there. Well, man. I want to refer them to you. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> referring to you. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, see Jeremy, <laughs> he's doing things on a way grander scale than me. <laughs> well, thank you. Awesome. Much appreciated. So this is the time of the show, man, where we do a shameless plug. You can plug a friend, quote, websites, Facebook, products, your favorite movie, give a shout out, do whatever it is that you want. This is your moment, your shameless plug. Go. I'm going to do a, a promotion for the hurricane from the Motor City. No, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Douglas. No. Um yeah, I, so I mentioned the checklist earlier. I have a checklist that teaches people to be an amazing podcast guest. If they go to commandyourbrand.media slash checklist, um, it's going to help you apply some of the things I've mentioned today and uh, totally free for you to just go out there and grab it. And I, I hope it uh, helps you get moving forward. Boom. Love it. All right, man. It is time to wrap up. Can you deliver your best nugget of knowledge that will motivate, transcend, and inspire someone to take action? Absolutely. So the biggest thing I'm going to say is I, I read a book called uh, So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport. Amazing book, by the way. Um, yeah? Great book. Okay, good. <laughs> I heard <laughs> that for something. Is, um, great book. I, the, he, Cal talks about like not following your passion because it's a really bad idea um, because passion doesn't always pay you. And I, and I think that's so true. Like, like it's kind of finding out what your skill set is, get so darn good at that skill. And once something gets easy and you get so good at it, it gets to be really fun. And then you're actually doing what you're passionate about. So find out what you're good at, get really darn good at it, and the passion will follow. Dude, I love it, man. I, I, I've heard kind of the similar things, you know, and I'd mention them like, yeah, but everybody talks about following your passion. Like, what do you love? What's your passionate about? What do you – it's I, – I equate passion to your inner drive. Your inner drive only takes you so far. And then you need one more component. And then that's only going to take you so far. And you need one more component, one more component. And it's like building blocks. You know, you're just building everything step, one step, one step, one step. And, and that's just, like you said, just is that one little step. That I read the book. I would tell everybody to go read that book. It's a great, great book. So give us a call to action. We always end the show with a call to action. What should someone do today? You talked about going to your websites and, you know, go to command your brand. You mentioned a book. So, what would be your call to action to unlock someone's potential, to elevate their life? Well, I'm going to go back to something you said, and that's find a mentor. Find somebody that is where you want to be, on the level you want to be, making the money you want to be, and go out, find that person, and figure out how you can serve them. Because I'll tell you right now, they don't uh, unless you're, you're figuring out a way to pay them or whatever, they're not going to want to just do it. Like They don't want more opportunities that don't pay them. So figure out how you can add value to their lives or how you can hire them to work with them and cut the learning curve. Awesome. Dude, absolutely love it, man. Dude, I want to thank you for being on the show. It has been amazing. I've learned some things from you, and I look forward to following you on your journey some more, man. Well, thank you so much for having me today, Sean. I, I really appreciate it, and it was fun to hang out.
Yeah, man. Likewise. Hopefully we will uh, see each other again at either PodFest, PodCon, New Media Summit, something, man. I'm looking forward to, to hooking up with you again, man. Absolutely, my brother. Perfect. So Life Transformation Radio listeners, another impactful episode with people who are crushing life, playing full out, and impacting and elevating everyone's life around them. If anything Jeremy said resonated with you, you can go to commandyourbrand.media and then go to www.jeremyryanslate.com. Follow Jeremy on all of his social media platforms at Jeremy Ryan Slate. Go to iTunes, look up, create your own life podcast. You've got to get hooked up with this podcast. Create your own life podcast. Subscribe to his show. And then while you're at it, search for Life Transformation Radio and subscribe to mine. Absolutely amazing people are in this world. So I want to leave you with this. Live your brand. Find opportunities every day to live out the values that you hold deep in your heart. I call that living your brand. And until next episode, have a great day.